Hey folks, this is Emily. I'm coming back online after a couple of weeks out for medical care. While I've been gone, it seems like things have gotten pretty crazy in climate. So I'm making this uh, to get sort of up to speed, pull together a lot of the big news stories we've heard in the last couple of weeks. If you, like me, want to know when we've hit a tipping point in the Gulf Stream, this is the video for you. We're going to start small. I'm going to pull together some threats. I promise if you stick with me, we're getting good place. So this February, it's been a very weird February over much of America. Unusually warm. For the first time ever, we saw tornadoes in Wisconsin in February. We can see this reported here in U.S. News. And the tornadoes, which were pretty strong, they got up to like an F2. I was not surprised. I suspected before I read the location that they would be right around this band in Wisconsin. And let me show you why. This is a figure from the NCA5 showing where we're going to see really extreme storms at 2 degrees C. As you may be aware, we are currently very close to 2 C. I'll show that for you in a minute. But if you look at what's happening now, we do see that the predictions that we have in the NCA5 are very relevant for today. Related to global temperature information, so Professor Elliot Jacobson, who always has really solid climate information, shares this picture from the Copernicus Institute, where we can see that January continues to be well above a pre-industrial temperatures, averaging over 1.5 C, with the hottest day being at 1.9 C. And we saw several days at or close to two um, in the end of 2023 as well. In November, we saw. You may be aware, because this has also been widely reported, that in 2023, we saw our first year-long breach of 1.5. The 2023 is officially a year that was completely over 1.5 C pre-industrial temperature. So those are the facts on the ground. You know, like most climate-aware people, even most climate scientists, 2023 has been a weird year. It took everyone by surprise. When I started American Resiliency in 2021, I thought we'd have more time before we saw these numbers. I thought we'd have more time to get ready. When the El Nino got rolling, like most other people, I didn't think we'd see these kind of highs for this long. I've said before on this channel, we appear to be at this point in human history cruising pretty close to some tipping points. These tipping points, it seems like they're lurking much closer to 2C than 3C. And climate scientists had agreed. It had been a strong consensus the tipping points were swimming around somewhere in that range, somewhere between 2 and 3C. This weekend, to follow up with this information that we have definitely breached temperature thresholds, there's been a lot of news about AMOC collapse. Before we talk about AMOC collapse, I need you to put one more piece of information like in your pocket so that we can understand it. I just want to show you a little information about sea surface temperatures. We're using this University of Maine information. You can see that right now sea surface temperatures continue to be higher than they have ever been, and that we are looking at similarly anomalous highs being maintained from 2023. So the ocean is hot and it's continuing to get hotter, as well as seeing this unusual global heat. All right, this is the basic information we need as we look critically at AMOC collapse information. I'm not going to link to any of the mainstream coverage on the AMOC collapse. You probably saw their front page articles on CNN. It's everywhere. It was very clear to me reading through them that no science journalist employed by any of the major rads was able to make sense of this paper, which we're going to look at. Let me make it clear that I don't blame anyone for not being able to make sense of this paper. This paper that is being widely reported in the mainstream news, much more widely than I've ever seen such a dense, elegant, beautiful, indisciplined paper reported, it's very difficult to make sense of it. I think that this is the sort of paper where you do need to have pretty advanced degrees to be familiar with the discourse language. I'm very grateful due to science.org's keeping it open to everyone that I was able to read it. To say that this paper indicates anything temporal about AMOC collapse is to misread the purpose of this paper. This paper, which you've got the link in the video description, you can check it out. It's important not because it says when collapse will occur, but because it provides very convincing evidence that collapse will occur. Back when we started seeing AMOC collapse in the news, I made a video about it because it's a terrifying reality that will almost certainly destroy global civilization. I said in that video that AMOC doesn't really get weaker, it turns off. 
But of course, the media has seized on the other side of what had been kind of a debate in the field, because it's much nicer to think that maybe this complex system that underlies our planet's current climate stability doesn't collapse. Like, it's nicer to think maybe it just keeps getting weaker and we could get used to that. This paper provides convincing evidence that this is a collapse-based system, that AMOX is an on-off type system. Other information that we're getting out of the field, though, that gives us the date. You might have remembered that from, um, it was in the summer, we got the information giving the date where I made that first AMOC video. Scientists who work in this field are saying that we will see AMOC collapse by 2100. Earliest date given is 2025. So here's where I'm standing on this right now. Here's my personal stance. I don't think that AMOC is down yet. I think that we're seeing a lot of early warning signals. And I think that things are gonna get very weird in the next couple of years. They were already getting weird. So this shouldn't be super shocking. Now we're gonna talk about a couple of important practical implications for that weirdness. You know, we wanna know where's good to be in both standard continued warming, global warming. We probably also wanna know where's good to be in AMOC collapse. Another concern that I have that I imagine you have as well is a desire to know what's going on. Because I don't think there's going to be an official notice like the AMOC has collapsed. Do you? My husband and I were joking about this in the morning. He said, don't worry. You know, AMOC isn't going to collapse. It's just going to go off where those missing crabs are. <laughs> so funny. And like, so true. We have to be able to tell by observation what's going on. We really cannot assume that anyone is going to give us information about this that's going to help us make decisions because everything is going to be pretty chicken with its head come off at this time. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about where it's good to be. Let's talk about some ways that I think we could tell if AMOC is down versus if we should project that we're on the continued heating pathway, like if we were proceeding before we hit a tipping point, because these are both important decision-making scenarios. So, Let's go back to that paper. So here we are back in our big contemporary AMOC paper. Let's look at figure two. Figure two, this is nice, right? It's complex patterns though. I want you to take a second, let's get oriented. So we're modeling here what's gonna happen to the climate in the case of AMOC collapse in these boxed regions. So this isn't for all of Africa, five isn't for all of Asia, we're modeling boxed regions. We're looking at precipitation. So these big bars, the red is before collapse, the blue is after collapse. Looking at temperature, red is before collapse, blue is after collapse. I know this is a lot of information here, but I want you to try and relax your eyes for a minute and look at the patterns. Look at those different graphs and tell me how different is the red from the blue. Big differences are bad. Big differences are big changes. And on these patterns, even small differences are meaningful. This is a visualization of some elegant stat work. Every difference that you see here means something. So I bet you're seeing that North America and Asia, in these boxes, they look the most normal. They have the least change. I'm giving it to you more of an oral presentation. If AMOC collapses, they say that the Southern Hemisphere will become hotter and drier, that we expect the water cycle of the Southern Hemisphere to be severely deformed. They say Europe will become much colder, too fast for adaptation measures, Sea level rise will be extreme because we expect a lot of the Antarctica to melt with that Southern hemisphere warming. We're talking about a 13 foot minimum sea level rise. The map that we saw there in the paper does offer some hope for parts of Southeast Asia. This would be perhaps more beneficial for some parts of Southeast Asia than continued heating, as well as inland North America. Similar patterns for both of those inland potential agricultural areas. In North America, you're going to want to be within a few hundred miles of the Great Lakes. There's greater stability to the western side of Lake Michigan. Let's take a step back. I talked about Wisconsin earlier. If you're a person who, like me, you want to do your best, you want to build a community that can thrive as long as it can, live a good life as long as you can, 
the northern Midwest is the destination region you want in a continued warming scenario. The parts of the northern Midwest that I have previously highlighted as destination regions, I highlighted them as destinations because they're projected to still be good at three if we do resilience and have attention to local challenges, which I highlight in the destination videos. From what limited information we have about how North America will change in the event of an AMOC collapse, that region, the Northern Midwest, is the only place in the US with good survivability overlap for both scenarios. That's important to know. I think that's important to know. Now though, we gotta know, how can we tell if AMOC is down? How can we know if AMOC is sleeping with the crabs? What are the signs? Because until AMOC goes down, we must be concerned about model risks. We must be concerned about those risks at 2C. And I think it's worth starting to look at risks at 3C if we're already hitting two now, right? The work that's been done modeling the pathway has given us excellent information about how to expect at 1.5 and at two. So here's the signs that I'm gonna be watching. The first sign, is North America running hot and Europe running hot? That's a sign that we're on a modeled warming pathway. If North America is hot and Europe is normal, not even cool, if Europe is seeing normal summer, that's a sign that it's gone down. That's a sign that AMOC collapse will have occurred. I think we can watch that information pretty easy on the global news. Right now, we are still hearing out of Europe that they're breaking heat records all over the place. Here's sign number two. Are those sea surface temperatures getting higher and higher? Because if they keep going up, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, that's gonna continue to drive Northern glacial melt. That's gonna pour fresh water into the AMOC system to drive collapse. And we can watch that here. This is information that you can check out here at this website. It updates every day. The third signal is ice. Northern Hemisphere ice would be projected to increase pretty quickly and dramatically. If we saw AMOC collapse, Southern Hemisphere ice, not so much. As usual, it's Zach who has the goods on this. You might remember in 2023, we saw really low Antarctic sea ice concentration. It's coming in low at 2024. Global ice averages right now are getting closer to normal. They're returning closer to normal, even with the Antarctic loss, because we see that Arctic sea ice is going um, up. It's better than it's been for about 10 years. So I would want all three of those indicators to be strong and clear. I would want to see differentiation between US and Europe. I would want to see increasing sea surface temperatures, particularly in the Northern hemisphere. And I would want to see the pattern that we are seeing with Antarctic versus Arctic sea ice. I would want all three of those indicators to be glowing bright. And then I would say we've hit the tipping point. We're off the model track. You might notice we're pretty close to that point, but it's really important not to call it early here in North America. You know that I've put a lot of effort into making sure we don't call things too early. And that's because we're more vulnerable to threats if we call it early. If we've got another six months before AMOC really goes down, if we're gonna face a true 2C summer here in North America, before AMOC cools off the Northern Hemisphere a little bit, we can't afford to lose focus. It's time to get ready. I gotta take a short break. I'm gonna come back and make another video about that imminent concern. It'll be coming up next. Folks, thanks for being here with me. The support for American resiliency is just incredible. People have given so much to this project. It's the reason why I'm able to keep doing it. I want you to know this uh, last month is the first month that we are off the runway. We are on target to being able to be with you, keeping an eye on the news, trying to get you the information you need indefinitely. Thank you so much for everyone here with me. Talk to you again soon.